to see why you can't listen to all those people who came through the fire. Listen to their folks. They don't want you. They want Emma. Yes. They want Jeremy. <laughs> My wife doesn't want you. The dead doesn't want you. You've let the dead down. Now you want to come for the living? My, my. Are you having a laugh? Um, we'll listen to the next clip as well now, um, just before we get some reaction from you. I beg you, do not play a game with us. I beg you. Do not tell us lies. I beg you, do not waste our time. Um, so Kim Taylor-Smith, first of all, that gentleman um, upstairs at the council meeting saying, we don't want you, you're not listening. Your response to that? Yeah. Well, actions speak louder than words, um, as far as I'm concerned. I've obviously taken this role on, and my specific brief is to deal with Grenfell, North Kensington and the provision of housing and we have a, a lot of people in hotels in a desperate situation and my priority is to get them out of those hotels and get them into accommodation. But are you the We've right people to do that given what that man was saying? They, they, they don't want you, they don't want the team that's in situ, that's quite clear from that meeting last night. Yeah. Well, I believe I am the right man to do that. I work as part of a team. I mean, the, the, the anger that was expressed at last night's uh, council meeting is no different to all the other meetings we've attended over the last uh, month uh, in North Kensington. You know, on the second day after the, the fire in the, uh, in the Westway Centre, you know, uh, our staff were being told to take off all their badges, as were other people from the NHS, and clearly there's a tremendous amount of anger directed not just justifiably towards the, the, the uh, uh, Kensington Chelsea Council, but also wider in terms of established. You know, there was a lot of anger there, but I believe the best way of addressing that is to build trust. You know, we're coming from the basement on that one, uh, and I recognise that, but to build trust by delivering what people need. And that second clip there, I mean, we weren't just seeing anger last night, were we? We were seeing raw emotion, people who are traumatised, who are still grieving, and she was saying, please don't play games with us. We want the truth. Do you think that they're getting the truth? Well, I mean, the truth comes from lots of different... There are lots and lots of questions. I mean, there are a lot of questions relating to the building itself and the events that lead up in the choir. That's all part of the inquiry, as part of the criminal investigation. Uh, and, it's, and, and it's very difficult to ask. There were questions last night when, um, um, uh, regarding the tower itself. Uh, and what's going to happen with the tower and clearly long term that's going to be a very much a decision as far as the local community is concerned you know but this is not a, these aren't things that the council can answer these are things that obviously we can request our answers from the police DVI, I, I, DVI are currently con conducting that investigation um, you know they're the ones that obviously give the, uh, the answers but understandably where people aren't getting answers they're getting incredibly uh, upset and incredibly angry um, you know you talk about housing that being your area of expertise um, have listened to this woman what do you make of this since the fire I moved four hotels and I don't know now where I'm still gonna be staying I didn't go to work I'm confused I don't know where I'm going or where I'm what I'm doing some reaction to that well, my reaction is we have to move at the pace of the people. We've made 300 offers, we've had 17 acceptances, and that's a reflection of the fact that it's a very delicate situation of finding housing which is appropriate to people. I mean, what was lost in the Malay last night was a, an announcement that we bought another 31 units. So that's 99 units that we've bought in the last month, committing the reserves that we have, which is important, and obviously to do that. But that's only 99. We have 151 households from the Grenfell Tower and the immediate walkway that we're obviously having to provide a, um, a, a permanent alternative accommodation that suits their needs. Not everybody wants to be in, in, in North Kensington for understandable reasons. So again, that's something which we have, we have to, 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 to factor in. But beyond the 151, we have all the, the blocks around. I mean, we've got 358 units. The scale of this is incredibly large, and it's something that needs to be done as quickly as, as possible. 
Um, yesterday, uh, Elizabeth announced the long-term uh, target of doing 400 houses. I've looked, I had a quick look at all the projects we have in, 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 in progress and on sites available, and I believe that is something that is achievable. But that's not going to deal with the lady who you've just shown in the clip. She's in a hotel, you know, and it's desperate. She's been in a hotel for a month. And so we can only offer, offer and find a solution that is right for her. You know, but we're not going to force her into that decision. Quite rightly, wouldn't do that. Um, you know, you talk about this being a delicate situation. Um, we've had a, a local resident on the programme this morning saying that at the meeting last night, he saw members of the council rolling their eyes, others looking at their phone as if they were bored. And I just want to play you a clip here now of Councillor Matthew Palmer and just have a watch of his lips and what he's mouthing. Just to be clear there, uh, Councillor Matthew Palmer is mouthing, don't let them in, do not, do not let them in, and he repeats it many times. And do you think that's the correct way to have handled the meeting last night? Oh, well, I mean, yesterday's uh, meeting, um, we, I mean, we have a small council chain, chamber. I mean, we were being directed by the, the police who um, uh, advised us that we had 800 people turning up to the meeting. You know, we wanted to have the maximum number of people there um, and we linked, obviously, in terms of the Great Hall and to outside to make sure and let into the to um, um, the chamber as many people. You know, but again, only a month ago we had in that same chamber we had people storming in, and, and if you had taken the cameras out through those doors where you see to the left in the mayor's chamber, you would see that that was smashed up. So we have a lot of fear and concern, obviously, for for uh, uh, we had a lot of fear and concern within the building. We obviously have a concern for the safety of people coming in. And, and the security people that were there were obviously there to give priority to the to the victims and the speakers and the and a, a selection of the people who were there to protest justice for Grenfell. Quite rightly, they had to come in and get their room. So orchestration was quite difficult yesterday, and I acknowledge it was difficult. We, what we have done, and we're not hiding from this, we're now saying we're going to have eight council meetings. We've we've, we've increased that number, so we will have this, and we will continue the policy of being open and allow people to come in and speak. Um, just to be clear, but, and I'm know. going to push you on this because I do think it is important, there'll be people who are watching that clip and seeing that councillor saying do not let them in who feel very, very uncomfortable with that. And I just want to make sure that you think that was the right thing to do. Uh, I don't think it's the right thing to make that comment. Um, I don't think it was the right thing to, um, to bar people coming in. But as I stress that the, the security arrangements were being handled in conjunction with the police. This isn't the council turning around saying don't let these people in. We welcome the people who came in. We had three and a half hours of that council meeting dedicated to allowing people to speak. Um, which is not something we d we've ever done before at a council meeting, but that is really reflecting, and that was, that was an initiative of the new leader, uh, Elizabeth, to ensure that people are heard. So uh, in terms of orchestrating fu future meetings, it's always very difficult, you know, in future meetings, and I've seen this from the meetings in North Kensington, because you have a lot of victims who will come who won't want to have the media there, who want to have a quiet you know, uh, meeting and be able to answer questions without it being, being dominated by other people. So it is reaching that balance. And yes, I think it was the events of last night are grateful. We will look at that and we will ensure that the next council meeting we give the widest opportunity to people to come.